So what does the Second Amendment actually say? A well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of the free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's it. Not a lot of words, just very specific ones. It means that the states have the right to have a well-regulated militia. Sure, you need an organized military force to defend your country. Uh, the Founding Fathers clearly stated. Well, the Founders were very clear about it, and uh, the assumption went without saying. The assumption went without saying. The assumption went without saying. The Founding Fathers didn't think that the right to bear arms included bazookas, assault weapons, and all the rest. I need one of these to protect my Second Amendment right! You know, the Second Amendment right argument in America, by the way, is completely specious for the very simple reason. If you thought you were protecting your Second Amendment to protect against tyranny, you would have acted already. The fact that you haven't proves you're <laughs> weak. This is it, dumbasses! There's no more time to screw around! Get yourselves in gear, police, that serve this system, and realize, decide whose side you're on! Weak. I saw all these police videos from around the country, Indiana, California, you name it, where cops run up and boot kick suspects in the head when the guys have got their hands out, and then the police defend it and say, they were just positioning his head. They kicked the head, blood's flying, you know, just boom, total power. Weak. Guns are here to defend us from the overwhelming force of government. The assumption went without saying. The assumption went without saying. The assumption went without saying that everybody can have a gun to go out hunting because everybody was a hunter. Um, but they wanted to be explicit that uh, individuals own guns because they never wanted to dis uh, have the uh, populace disarmed. No one in America should be able to have, no citizen should be able to have an assault rifle, an automatic assault rifle. No citizen should be able to have a clip that has more than 10 bullets in it. Sure, you need an organized military force to defend your country. But because there's a comma between well-regulated militia for the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, because there's some comma, there's, there's some difference there. I mean, I don't understand this. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state shall not be infringed. And they believe that each, each community and each state would have a militia, which was just a group of people who could be called up in an emergency, could be deputized for protection. In the, in the Second Amendment, uh, for the security of a free state, uh, a well-regulated militia, well, the well-regulated militia, it's in the U.S. Code, it's men 17 to 54. Sure, you need an organized military force to defend your country. I think it was the lack of respect for the Second Amendment that contributed a whole lot to the disaster of 9-11. 9-11, 9-11. I think we have a mental health epidemic. Unfortunately in America, you get 300 million peasants debating Christian fundamentalism while they're having all their will stolen by Shmanas on Wall Street and they're doing nothing about it because their brains are addled with drugs. My beloved republic that my children live in, that my family has been here for, you know, since the Mayflower and founding Texas, and I love America. 9-11, 9-11, 9-11. Folks, it's so evil. Weak. The Constitution of the United States does not give people rights. Anyone who believes their rights and powers come from publications like the Constitution of the United States, the Holy Bible, or Action Comics number one, must also believe that their rights and powers can be taken away by people using the Constitution of the United States, the Holy Bible, or Action Comics number one. The Constitution of the United States is the con of the United States. The Holy Bible? There are holes in the Holy Bible. People who actually read the Holy Bible will readily tell you the Holy Bible is filled with contradictions. Action Comics number one is worth a lot of money. I think over two million dollars. But we can't talk about Superman right now because Superman is not from America. Superman is an alien, a super illegal alien. Let's talk about this Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States and this so-called Bill of Rights you know, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution? The first 10 add-ons to this old Constitution. And so this Bill of Rights, including this Second Amendment, ratified effective December 15th, 1791. Amendment 2. A well-regulated militia 
being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And so what you have to do, people, is break down that sentence as you would in high school. Except in high school, you're breaking down these sentences in French or German or Spanish. If you're breaking down sentences like this in English, you'd understand what's really going on. So you're going to have a subjective part of this sentence and objective. The subject is this militia, a well-regulated militia. The objective part of the sentence shall not be infringed. That's your verb taking over, letting you know what's going on. What's going on to the subject? A well-regulated militia shall not be infringed. These phrases that are separated by commas that Alex Jones is so confused by. I mean, I don't understand this, but because there's a comma between well-regulated militia for the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Because there's some comma, there's, there's some difference there. Being necessary to the security of a free state, well, it's a well-regulated militia that is necessary to the security of a free state. And this, uh, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, well, that's within a well-regulated militia. A well-regulated militia is necessary to the right of the people to keep and bear arms. It is a well-regulated militia that shall not be infringed. This Second Amendment, these Bill of Rights, this Constitution of the United States does not give people rights. The Constitution describes the structure of government. The Constitution also describes the actions, the activities of government. The Second Amendment refers to a militia. A militia shall not be infringed. You have to look to the Militia Act of 1792, passed May 2nd, 1792. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled, that whenever the United States shall be invaded or be in imminent danger of invasion from any foreign nation or Indian tribe, it shall be lawful for the President of the United States to call forth such number of the militia of the state or states most convenient to the place of danger or scene of action. People talking about these militias and it's going to be the President of the United States that can call forth these state militias? Well, when uh, the United States shall be invaded or be in imminent danger of invasion from any foreign nation or Indian tribe, George Washington and the framers of this Constitution of the United States were not talking about arming citizens to take on this government of the United States of America. George Washington was not talking about anybody taking up arms against George Washington. George Washington was talking about the governments of foreign nations or of these Indians, you know, the natives that were already here that they had to kill off en masse so they could steal their land. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, the founding fathers had to do that. So this Militia Act of 1792, well, it's going to talk about, well, what is a militia? So this, you have to go to the Militia Act of 1792, passed on May 8th, 1792. Each and every free, able-bodied, white male citizen of the respective states resident therein, who is or shall be of age 18 years and under the age of 45 years, shall severally and respectively be enrolled in the militia. That's every free, able-bodied, white male citizen. And so once these white male citizens are called into action by George Washington, well, every citizen so enrolled and notified shall within six months thereafter provide himself with a good musket or firelock, a sufficient bayonet and belt, two spare flints, a knapsack, a pouch with a box therein to contain not less than 24 cartridges. No citizen should be able to have a clip that has more than 10 bullets in it. You have to understand, when George Washington called up these white guys to fight, they had to get their own guns. That's why this Constitution had to allow for keeping and bearing arms by citizens in a militia 
white male citizens in a militia. You have to get your own gun. The Constitution of the United States does not give people rights. Government uses legislation and enforcement to disarm subjects all the time. You people openly know this. Just look to Chicago. Look to New York City. You people should realize that this video is edited in a manner that makes it appear that Penn and Teller share my interpretation of the Second Amendment with regard to the militia not being infringed upon. Well, no. The truth is that Penn and Teller do not share that opinion. They share the same opinion as Alex Jones. I've been too busy for two weeks to even get it up. Penn and Teller and Alex Jones and Ron Paul believe that the Constitution of the United States gives people rights. That's why half the time, these guys are out here crying about getting their rights back. If you have to ask someone to give you your rights back, that means you are a slave. You'll get what you're given.